Avatar any way you want. Any way I want. Any way we want, because now it's a new season. New season. And, and the way we're going to do things might be a little different than the way we did things in the football. So the whole thing with football season is football's kind of whack. You know, like... I mean, football's, like, really cool from, like, late September to, like, early February. Yeah, probably. <laughs> I mean, it's, probably. it's a lot It's a lot cooler than, like, <laughs> hockey. Oh, uh, well. I that's, mean, that's true. Hockey... Hockey is one of those things where it can be, it's a slow burn. Mm. Um, baseball is also kind of the same way. Oh, yeah. Uh, what is it? Put... It's not until, like, the last few months, like, the last, like, month and a half, two months, that's when it starts getting, like, intense. I put a tweet out on uh, on our pick last Twitter where I was, like, because I knew, like, because as, like, a Nick, quote-unquote Knicks fan, I keep an eye on what's going on. Mm-hmm. And there was like twenty some odd games left for the Knicks, and I was like, okay, so there's about twenty twenty five games left in the NBA season, but there's like eight thousand more hockey games left to play. <laughs> yeah, it's so weird. So close to the end of the season, they got rid of their best player. Uh, oh, yeah. You know, but I don't... oh no, 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 that was gonna happen. Like I'm surprised they did it. I'm surprised it happened so fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody loved him. Speaking but... of things that happened so fast. We're back once again. That's true. Pick last That's podcast, right, doing the baseball thing. It's baseball season. That's in right. A week and a half, right? No, it started. Uh, pitchers and catches reported oh, today. Pitchers and catches don't count. I'm not happy until there's a game going on, whether it be spring training or actual. I think spring training games start next week. Next week. Next yeah. week. Yeah, because yeah. I think uh, since pitchers and catches reported today, quote unquote reported today, players come in. Uh, Next week, and then they start going. And I think by the weekend, we're going to have some games, baby. There we go. Yes. There we go. Can't wait. Cannot Just, wait. Cannot wait. It's going to be a very interesting season. Um, especially because there are reports that Machado and Harper... Still as of this day. As, as of, of this February day, 14th. Still not signing uh, with the team yet. Uh, they said that it might not happen until like mid-March. It's like, oh, God. it's like, don't you want them to get incorporated with, with a team? Like, don't you want them to get, like, involved in, in that workout? Well, I mean, they've got, if if they're not working out now, <laughs> I mean, That's a little if, like, up, Bryce Harper right? comes in, like, 30 pounds overweight, <laughs> to, like, oh, I just signed $300 million, but I'm, like, fucking fat now. Mm-hmm. Um, no, I think, I th- what's going to be crazy is that, they're, they're, I think, Bryce Harper's going to be like J.D. Mar- JD Martinez, like getting that kind of deal. Mm-hmm. Where it'll, it'll sound like a, he wants a long-term contract, but it's going to be like basically last minute. Yeah. Uh, Machado, I think, will he will, he'll break uh, probably first and just sign like a, a one-year deal. I see. I think that the longer he waits, mm-hmm. the the less of a beneficial deal for him he's going to get. Like, I think he's waiting and waiting and trying to get the right one, but I think all it's doing is just kind of, like, tanking. Yeah. Because when one team doesn't sign him and other team's like, well, why isn't this guy signing with... Like, why isn't he signing with them? And, like, right. you know, it's like that, that draft day movie where, yeah. like, you know, something happens and they're like, oh, why didn't they take him? And everybody's trying to figure out reasons why, and then it's just like, he's a shitty fucking attitude. And nobody no. <laughs> fucking likes him. But, you know, he's a good player. <laughs> no, I don't... I. Uh, no, I don't think... Uh, with- with, with Machado, I think, I think the deal is these these guys, and it, it affects the entire free agency market because these guys are the high priced guys. Mm-hmm. These are your one and two free agents. They set the market for the other guys, so there's still like a hundred free agents out there that are really good. Well, not, I mean maybe not that much, but like there's still a lot of good free agents out there. Like Adam Jones is still out there, Carlos yeah. Gonzalez is still out there, you know, like a bunch of dudes still out there, really good players. And the only reason why they haven't signed yet is because their market is what Harper and Machado set for them. Yeah. So infielders look at what Machado get, outfielders, outfielders look, look at what it. Harper get, and like you could, you could say, well, they're not going to get the same thing. Well, it's like no, but it's like that's like the max. That's the the line they can't cross. Mm-hmm. So like, like Adam Jones, if he like, he I I would really want him to like, I really want him to sign with the Mets for one year. I. That would be a good fit. I don't It'd be know a really saying. good fit because he's, you know, veteran outfielder. I don't trust. Uh, man, it's just a lot of things. But um, let's actually do this cr- properly. Um, mm-hmm. The Pick Less Podcast now baseball show or working title. We're gonna figure it out mm-hmm. um, with your boys Brian 
and Mike. Hello. The familia, the family. The old familiar. Finally doing a show together. Finally doing a show together. After let's all see, this time. After four years of podcasting. So, so let, let, let's break it down real quick. Uh, me and Brian used to go to movies all the time together. Yeah. Um, he decides to make a movie podcast. Yes. He asks his co-host, Matt, to, <laughs> d- to do it. Doesn't even acknowledge me, and I'm like, "All right, well, I wanted, whatever." I wanted it to be good. Whatever. <laughs> then there were a few other podcast ideas thrown out. Didn't want to do it. We finally got on board with the sports one. Me and Brian played softball together. We started up playing. Uh, yeah, you have four computers in here and a mm-hmm. microphone. Mm-hmm. Y'all could ask. You could have just said, "Like I'm starting <laughs> one up. You don't have to wait for me." I had an iPad for years. I had one iPad. <laughs> Anyway, you know, I, we, me and him started to pick up football uh, that we play on Sundays. Yeah. Um, you know, play fantasy soft, baseball, fantasy baseball, fantasy, fantasy football. football. And, you know, who decides to, to, you know, who does he decide to do a football podcast with? Andrew Parker. <laughs> like I said, it's like, <laughs> like I said, you have four fucking computers yeah, in your I, room. Yeah, I know. You but, have my number. But still. I don't have to be the guy. <laughs> Things work both ways here. It's a two way street. It's like I had to, I had to invite myself onto that. I was like, yeah, I'll do you a know, sports gonna, podcast. You were going to be a part of it anyway. Like that was the thing. Like it was always going to be like a three man show. Me and Andrew, we were just working out the deal. Uh, but no, like a baseball show. Also like, uh, you know, I've also tried other things. Like, we tried starting up the blogs. We did all this other stuff. The blogs is uh, something that yeah. I, I really wish worked out. I really wish, too. Because, <laughs> I mean, I suck at writing, but... You do. I that's do. Not, that's I not do a but false it's, statement. <laughs> it was more of just, like, a conglomerate I wanted to start. Like, a, yeah. like a, an industry thing. So, we're, we're doing a, a baseball show, because Andrew's not a big baseball guy. Uh, me and Mikey are baseball guys. Yes. We've been baseball guys since baseball guys was a thing. That's true. That's true. <laughs> we, we, like, we've played it uh, all throughout high school. Like, I mean, we're not in the pros, but like, we've, we've played the game for a long time. We've played softball, and we, we've, gotten, you know, we've gotten familiar with the ins and outs of the game. We're also huge fans. Uh, Mikey's a big Yankees fan. Yes, very big Yankee fan. I'm a big Met fan. To the fact that I actually worked for them for a few years. Yes, you did. And, very up. I'm and very, actually, uh, that killed my drive of watching baseball. Like you know, with being around it, like for let's say they had like a ten game homestand for being there ten games, and you're just going through the ins and outs of like just mm-hmm. working, and you can't really catch the game. And when you have a minute to be like, oh, I can finally watch like a like an inning, and you're like, yeah, I'd rather do something else. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I kind of felt that same way about uh about um. What was it? When I was a graphic designer. Right. Like, you know, I got so involved in that, and I just lost my passion for it, and I'm just like, eh, oh, man. you know, eh, don't want to really do this anymore. Yeah, <laughs> like, when you do something every day. Yeah. That's why, like, I think we don't do a podcast thing, because we actually like each other, so if we have to be around each other every day, we'd probably I mean, you're, probably not, get you're not wrong. Really <laughs> but... Like, if we're ever going to, like, be roommates, I don't think it would work. I don't know. I don't. I honestly don't want to be roommates with anybody. Like, take that, Anna. No, no, no. I mean, like, <laughs> aside aside from like her, right? Your girlfriend, like, my girlfriend. I have no interest being like roommates with anybody unless I had. So, like, some of my friends from out of state that I play Counter Strike with. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of our like things was like, "Yo, let's go to like, you know." whatever nevada or something like that and let's just like the houses there like they have like six bedroom houses for like five hundred thousand dollars and it's like it's you, like you have that in new york too five hundred thousand well, yeah, dollars yeah. is, is a lot of money oh no 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 sorry <laughs> no sorry it wasn't that much i think it was like i think it was like on the four like in the fours you know but it was like six bed like six bedrooms yeah and we're just like, let's just... I mean, your house let's just here all move like, around that, like... Uh, this like, was closer to six. Right. Um, I think, still, it's I like... I think what, you, what you, you may need, like, what you're thinking of, here's a little side, it's more of the tax breaks you get for being that, in, like, that's states exactly like Nevada, maybe true. Georgia, because you get a house bigger than this in Georgia for, like, 400K. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, so that's why the people turn in for some real estate advice. <laughs> so if you're looking, <laughs> if you're looking for a roommate, don't ask Mikey. Yeah. Um, speaking Don't. of people looking for a room or a roommate, we're talking about uh, the current baseball transactions that have just happened. Um, like we said earlier, there are a lot of still free agents that will probably, the dominoes will fall probably after this episode. Mm-hmm. 99% sure that once we 
it's to hit the the stop button on this episode, every good free agent is going to suck. I mean, probably. Yep. I wouldn't be. I would not be surprised. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. By the t- so we're gonna also this the baseball show is gonna be a biweekly show, which mm-hmm. we're not gonna be that every week because I can't I can't make this trip every fucking. Oh no, I, I understand, and I'm also gonna be also making the trip out to you. Yeah, like. We're, we're we're gonna try to make this work, uh, you know, best for all of us. And I, I was actually thinking this was gonna be a, a name idea. I was gonna, cause it's like the uh, it's we'll call it like the last ten because we'll take the last ten games and that's what we're gonna review. Ooh, so like okay. this will be the pick last podcast last ten, and so we'll, we'll pick last ten. No, don't don't pick last ten podcast. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we'll, we'll have the 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 pick was a, a one and the O oh, and the <laughs> podcast be a zero. <laughs> Fan four stick, the fan four like stick. That. Yeah, I got you. Spelling everything's with numbers. I like it. <laughs> um, so you just want to hop into it? So yeah, we're gonna jump right into it. We'll kind uh, of, we'll kind of bounce around. Um, we'll, we'll we'll hit. We'll try to hit a lot of the the big uh, splashes, transactions, big yeah. splashes that have happened. Yeah, which they're they're not a lot, but they're but the ones that have happened are like very talk worthy. Yes. Right, um, where do you want to go? I mean, right now you kind of have to go with. The biggest uh, one this this past off season, which I think was uh, the Dodgers and the Reds. Dodgers and the Reds, uh, they they made a trade. It was um, basically like Homer Bailey and like two other guys for Yasiel Puig, Matt Kemp, Alex Wood, and uh, um, who else? And so, and another and another guy. I think it was a minor leaguer. Which uh, oh yeah, that's another thing. We're not going to talk about uh, prospects. No, that's another no. show. Yes. So if we're, uh, I think if if there was a prospect in the deal, we'll just say a prospect. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So they they made that deal. Basically, the Dodgers got rid of two like two thirds of their outfield from their from the World Series starting outfield, uh, and a, and a pitcher who's been pretty good to uh, for a guy who has been fucking terrible <laughs> in Homer Bailey. Yeah. After his his no hitter or perfect game he threw. His career has taken a fucking hard turn to shit. Still, isn't that like isn't that all the pitchers that have like come close? Like pretty much, they, like, it's just like they have the one freak game. Like you never, I can't remember a pitcher that's not uh, Cliff Lee or uh, what's his name, the other guy. What team did he play for? Team, it was him. It was Cliff Lee and him played on the same team. Uh, were uh, they both like really fucking good? Cliff, uh, like Cliff Lee and Roy Halladay? Roy Halladay, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, like, pitchers like those, like, those two pitchers, I can't think of anybody who had an illustrious career after a perfect game since, like, since then. You know, like... No, I I mean, it's also a lot of the, uh... Yeah, I don't know. Like, Mark Burley? Like... He retired, but I mean... He, well, I he, mean, after he retired. His, his career was, uh... I mean, we do have pro reference on, so, I mean, it's like... It's kind of funny, like, his career... It's it, it's a lot of these guys that like the fire throw. Like Homer Bailey was always known to have some fucking bullets in his chamber, uh, but he also like after that he got a fucking like stacked contract. Mm-hmm. Like the red, like the they paid him like ninety million dollars for just one fucking game. And let's see, here's okay. So I think it happened in like two thousand eleven. Let's just say, mm-hmm. so in two thousand eleven he was nine and seven. 2012, he was three, uh, 13 and 10. Uh, 2013, 11 and 12, and I think he had Tommy John surgery in 2015. So in 2014, he was nine and five, and then 2015, zero and one. Then came back two and three, uh, six and nine, and then recently, one and fourteen with a six ERA. I don't, I don't understand. Yeah, but the Dodgers cut him right after they got him. And now he got he got yeah. he got picked up by the Royals. So that's I mean good for the Dodgers. Yeah, but like that was too much, too much, right? Like that no, was like I think what too they, much to trade, like for the Dodgers to trade, right? No, I think what it was it was a it was a space clearing and a budget clearing move. Oh, okay. I think because they got they I think they really wanted Harper. I think that was I, I think that well, they, they were, were trying like, to clear. They were trying to clear up a lot of a lot of that because they have a lot of guys in the outfield. They'll have like Clay, uh, Cody Bellinger. They'll have uh, I don't know, fucking Dodgers. Uh, uh, Dodgers outfield is like they have guys that play everywhere. Uh, Jock Peterson and there was a, I think Chris Anders, a Chris fucking guy. 
Yeah, but like <laughs> they have a lot of they have a lot of outfielders. But I think what they wanted to do, since they got rid of Kemp and they got rid of uh, Puig, is they wanted that money back because I think they got, and that's why they took Homer Bailey. Yeah. So they got the mon- they got some money clearing so that they could go after Harper. But they didn't get Harper. They signed AJ Pollock for five years at I think eighty eight million. Mm-hmm. And that's and that's a good move. Except AJ Pollock gets hurt a lot. A lot. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what else? Did, what else did the Dodgers do? Dodgers also uh, picked up Russell Martin. Yeah, they made a trade uh, with uh, Toronto for Toronto. Russell Martin because uh, I think they have uh, Chris Taylor is their uh, catching pro- no Austin Austin Barnes is their catching prospect, but he's not good yet. No, not yet. Yeah, so he uh, so he's there to be you know just uh, just that just that guy just that guy right now. Um, and they also got Joe Kelly. Yeah, I don't know why they did. I think because he spanked them in the World Series. Yeah. <laughs> That's why. Because <laughs> Joe Kelly's like, okay. Um, let's see. Why don't we go over to... And that was the Dodgers. That was the Dodgers. That was the Dodgers. Um, let's go over to... With Mariners. How about Se- them? Seattle Mariners. You want to talk about a team that is rebuilding? They made a lot of moves. Oof! They made a lot of moves. A lot of moves. A lot of question. Like a lot of. They made a move within a move. Yeah. <laughs> like, that was, like what do you like? What do you do? They go. What is it? They uh they finished what in fourth place? Third place. Third place of the AL West. They were eighty nine and seventy three. That's good. That's a good record. Plus five hundred. Um. Yeah, it's above five hundred, and I think. They they made a move which was they made a big move with the Mets, so it, it was uh, Edwin Diaz and Robinson Cano and a very low level prospect and sixty million dollars, which is mm-hmm. a higher prospect, to the Mets for uh, Jesus Christ it's like Jay Bruce, uh, Anthony Swarzak, uh, some other schmuck and two high level prospects and they and the Mets also I think gave them. Some money, money relief in return for Cano, and because Cano's contract was like, a, oh yeah, it, it was, was an was, anchor. Yeah, and then they like, and then they made a deal with the Phillies, where they sent Gene Segura and, oh my God, I should have really paid attention to what I was writing down. Yeah, dude. What's well, going I mean, on here? Hey, man, you're the Met fan here. No. You're the fuck. I'm talking I'm about the Phillies now. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> yeah. Why did we switch? No, because I switched. Because they, oh. they they made a deal with the Phillies. <laughs> And they got, I think, Carlos Santana and another, and oh, someone else, and maybe oh, J.P. Crawford. J.P. Crawford. And someone else for um, for Gene Segura and I think a pitcher maybe. And they, uh, they then traded Carlos Santana to the Indians, which he played for like the year before. Yeah. For Edwin Encarnacion, Edwin. Edwin. And now they've been trying to trade Encarnacion for like the past like two months. He's he's so good though. Like who? I would in Cartoon. Yeah, if you want a guy who just only hits home only runs, only hits home runs. Yeah, like, but um, he can't play anywhere defensively. Also, I will say that uh, we have like a general outline of uh, you know every team, mm-hmm. uh, like all the all the transit uh, all the transactions that were made. But most of this we're going off the top of our head. Yeah, so if, I, if you see if you hear us thinking like we, we keep it loose, baby. We're keeping it loose. We're not like really like. Going full blown. We're doing it the pick last. This style. is this is this is spring training last. for us. Baby. Yeah, this, this is spring. this well, is just talking about some big transa- uh, transactions. By the time we get to our fantasy baseball episode, oh, it'll be a lot better, dude. I can't wait for fantasy. It's baseball. gonna be good. It's gonna be a lot of fun. I can't I wait for a draft. Wait. Uh, it's gonna be a lot of fun. <laughs> I was like, I think everyone's like involved. Everyone's invested. Um, Where are we doing it? I think we're gonna be doing it in Valley Stream. I think we're, uh, I think Funch is gonna give us the firehouse if again. You- we should. We gotta go all out with like the boards, you know. Like, well, I instead of just paper, you know. Let's let's oh, go relax. all out. Rel- all right. So you, <laughs> you draw. You find some oak tag that can fit twenty four <laughs> rounds on it that people could write legibly on. <laughs> like, like, let's see how you do. Uh, I don't want to do it. <laughs> I, I thought I did all right that one year. I printed out your let everyone's team from the let the previous season, and then a draft card, mm-hmm. and then I, I also love the fact of like. Printing out the uh, the top like position players, like each individual position, and mm-hmm. then the top one hundred, and then people forgetting what happened. Yeah, like it's it's always my favorite part of the of the fantasy baseball draft of people getting redrafted. 
It's like you got to pay attention. You really like it, what was it? Uh, that we have some guy who tried to pick the same person four rounds, <laughs> three in rounds, a row. In a, three rounds in a row. In a row, he tried picking. <laughs> The, like, it, it, the who, best who was it? it was Chester. Oh, no, I meant, like, who was he trying to... Uh, Nelson Cruz. Nelson Cruz. So he tried drafting Nelson Cruz right. in, like, the 14th round one year, and then... But Nelson Cruz was taken in the 7th. So he tried mm. taking him in the 14th, and then, the, like, the 20th, and then, like, the 23rd. And he's like, oh, he's, each time he's like, oh, I'm gonna sneak this pick by you. <laughs> each like, time he thought it was gonna be a steal. Yeah. And he never crossed it off. But and it was just embarrassing. <laughs> But here's also my favorite thing that he's done. Like, that's one of the top top ones. But sometimes we don't have guys show up for the draft. So mm-hmm. we had – so in, and we do an offline draft. Um, you know, we, we kind of, we'll we explain it a little bit more when we get to the fantasy episode. Yeah. But so when uh, guys aren't there, somebody will draft their team for them. They'll, they'll text them and be like, all right, what kind of guy do you want in the first – like, give us your first couple picks. And after that, it just – everyone kind of picks, like, who they want the auto draft for them so if like our friend uh there was i think andrew was still in the league with us so andrew wanted like andrew didn't know so chester took his team but like flanagan doesn't show up a lot so he'll have like me or joey do his team do it, yeah so they'll pick like this is who i want to do draft my team because a lot of us are good at it a lot of us aren't, aren't. Uh, chester is not is hey, okay he's okay in the sense of like he always goes for the mets biggest guys yeah, he always he'll goes. Clear the, he'll clear that roster. He also quick. goes for the bigger guys. Like he doesn't know how to draft like not sleepers, not sleepers but like you know people who Mikey's aren't. Mikey's dogs are going nuts yeah, right now. I, I don't know. Sorry nuts. about that, guys. But um, <laughs> yeah, this is why you we recorded. Yeah, this is true. You're not wrong. My dog's I, dead. I, when my. <laughs> <laughs> Also, when my parents tell me that they're going out, like, right. I don't expect them to be home at 7 o'clock and then go nuts with the dog. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, what, do you, what can you do? What are you going to do? <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway, um, all right. Uh, also, the Mariners got uh, uh, Ichiro back. Yeah, yeah, they did. Ichiro is always a fun candidate. Oh, I forgot to finish the story about, about uh, Chester. Yeah, yeah so uh, the one year where Andrew was, I think Andrew's last year in our league. Um, Chester was gonna draft for him, so he's like, okay. <laughs> so like, I, I was like, I really don't want you to, but you know, because I, I ha- I'm the commissioner, so I have to run my team. Uh, I had to draft for someone else who wasn't there. So, I was, and then I also had to write everyone's like uh, results down. Mm-hmm. So I had like my hands were full. So Chester's like, I'll just and he he grabbed like Andrew's like paper. So he's like, I'll, I'll draft for him. So we go, okay, like all right, yeah. You know, I go, you know what? If Andrew needs a trade, I have no problem just going through with it. Um, so Chester, we're, we're drafting, and then Chester goes, okay, for Parker, I'm going to take, uh, let's just say David Wright. Let's just use him as a, an example. Yeah, placeholder. A placeholder. So he's like, I'm going to, and, and there, there, there are spots in the draft where one person, so it was Andrew, someone else, then Chester. So he goes, all right, Parker, I'm going to draft for, Par- I'm going to draft for Parker, I'm going to draft David Wright. Okay, cool. Thanks, Chester. No problem. Next, next guy drafts. Okay, cool, great, thanks. And, and then Chester looks at his his board, and he's like, "Oh man, I need a third baseman. I'm gonna take David Wright." And I'm like, Chet, "I'm like," and we all just looked at him. Everyone, everyone got like suspiciously quiet because it's it's down to me now. Because the commissioner would be like, "Yeah, he was drafted," and they, I go, "I go, Chester, like uh, David Wright's been drafted," and he's like, "Ah, damn." He's like, "Who took him?" I'm like, "Parker took him." He's like, ah, God damn it, Parker. I'm like, you're, you're drafting for Parker. <laughs> you picked the guy you wanted for another team. And, he, and then got mad at himself. And, and he actually said, God damn it, Parker. Like, Andrew did it on purpose. <laughs> and it wasn't even, it wasn't even a rap. It was literally f- 10 minutes. Yeah. 10 minutes. And he had the paper in front of him. He had both papers in front of him. Oh, my God. This is this is why I love on, offline drafting. Like as fun as like I mean fantasy football works well, mm-hmm. but like offline's off, always so much more fun. There's it offline drafting, and we're getting way off topic here, yeah. but it doesn't really matter. There's so many. Um, there's not that many great transactions. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
if you ever have the opportunity to to do an offline draft, like we highly recommend it. Yeah, because especially if you're all friends and stuff, like it's it's just a good time and. It really any, anytime anytime that I've been a part of a draft and we're like in talks for an offline draft mm-hmm. and then it's just like oh let's just do it online I'm like well that I fucking sucks I like, fight I fight for offline drafts all the time uh, I like with especially with baseball since I'm the one who runs it mm-hmm. like I, I I always want but last year we had I I ran into uh, I was moving <laughs> so my yep. house was like empty, empty and then also it was a blizzard mm-hmm. so I was like ah like don't even worry let's just draft <laughs> online. It was all right, but um, yeah, back, back to transactions. Yes, back to transactions. Uh, uh, Seattle's making a lot of moves. They're not going to be any good this year. They got they picked up uh, Hunter Strickland as well. Hunter Strickland, he's going to be in the bullpen. Uh, Justice Sheffield. Yeah, that's a good. That was a for James Paxton with the Yankees. Yeah, that was uh, what. Now as a Yankee fan, were you hyped about Sheffield at all? I mean, obviously, but we also, uh, I think on our list, like we kind of had we were more excited about our prospects who are actually on the team now like you know like a glaber like, like a, a, yeah like exactly a, and also a judge also like with clint uh frazier right you know coming i think hopefully being it healthy. was sheffield and frazier that came over in the same deal in the same deal yeah. yeah so i liked him you know i liked i liked everything that i heard and stuff like that and once that kind of once we got packs in, I was a lot more like well, so we, hyped for that, you know, we, like yeah, because the Yankees need start, uh, starting rotation help. Yes, like that was one of their big things they wanted to address. In uh oh, Mikey's entire command center just got killed by the sprite. No, it's okay. <laughs> uh, so yeah, like the Yankees really needed to improve their starting rotation. So this year they they re-signed J A Hap, uh, J Hap, I think how is it J Hap, J Hap, J Hap. Uh, they re-signed CC. Uh, they might extend uh, Severino. They may. Uh, um, was they have Tanaka? You know, um, and and we just strengthened our bullpen up a little. Oh, bit Oh yeah, too. you got Adam Adovino. You got uh, who? Zach Britton. Uh, Zach, Zach Britton. Who, Zach changes, Britton back? who changes his name? To Zach or, with a K now. Actually, he, that was actually his birth certificate name, no. and now he's. So was he trying to be Zach with an H to see that he's more financially like, I th- responsible? I think so. I don't know if he legally changed his name or he's going to his legal name, but it's something like he went from an H to a K, right? Yeah. So I don't know why. I don't that's know why such a thing. weird, um, a weird like like oh I'm gonna change. Yeah. <laughs> that's like me. Oh that would be like me. You changing changing my your name, name to from Brian I. with a Y to Brian with an yeah. I. Please don't. Like it doesn't even make sense. <laughs> like it's such like a not even a radical change at all. Mm-hmm. It'd be like if you change your name from like Mikey to Apples, like that would be a more like oh yeah I could I could see that. Yeah, I don't want to be Apples. Yeah, apples to Quattro. <laughs> Please no. Um. So yeah, I mean Shaker Can to Quattro. <laughs> Pizza rolls. Pizza rolls. Pizza rolls. The Quattro is a good nickname. <laughs> uh, so you know, like Sheffield, uh, obviously a great prospect. Yeah. But you know, I, I'm a little bit more happy with uh you with know Paxton. Paxton someone over. who's a little bit more uh. Uh, established. Yes, exactly. The best was on uh, one of the Yankees, I think, Instagrams, as it might have been a Yankee fan or a Yankee run Instagram. They have a picture of uh, Paxton with uh, without a beard, and he looks like he's a four-year-old you, child. Yeah, it's it's, it's weird. <laughs> it's, it's jarring. I don't like, I like, I hate when people have those, those pictures of, you know, people, you know, with a beard and then without a beard, because it's just like... That's no. why I'm surprised you're still a Yankee fan. I, as a big dude, component of facial hair. That's why I was totally okay with Brian Wilson not signing with the Yankees. And also he sucked. For that too. Like after he got out of the Giants, he was fucking terrible. Yeah. Um. What, what other team? Uh, what, what? Let's see. Because uh, the Yankees. Uh, uh, yeah, let's let's go to the Yankees. Yeah. All right. Let's go to the Yankees. Because we already kind of touched base. What on that. move of the Yankees did you like the most? Um. Honestly. Paxton. Mm-hmm. Um, probably my favorite. I am also a fan of us picking up uh, Tula Whiskey. Um, Tulo, fantastic player. I just we just need him to be healthy, which is no. the biggest problem in his career. Also, the fact you're paying him five hundred thousand dollars this year, exactly. Because Toronto, Toronto loves just getting big contracts and letting and him lose. Just let him lose for an absolutely for nothing. nothing. But you know, it comes down the it comes down to the fact that like he's. He should be a Hall of Famer. 
No, I'm not saying he is. I, I'm not saying he's. He, I no no. His stats don't reflect it because oh his injuries have fucked his him injuries over, have yeah. fucked him over. I'm saying that if he was completely healthy, maybe a few injuries here and there, but not every season like it has been. Mm. The guy plays as well as somebody who should be a Hall of Famer. Oh, yeah, I, I he's got mm. the skill set, but his stats obviously don't match it. He's that kind of player where you're if, hyped when he's on your team, right. but then he's. You're he, let down he when he's He definitely, hurt. from age, like, I think 21 to 30, he definitely was a game changer. Mm-hmm. Now I think he's, like, 34. Yeah, so he, he's, he's, he's got a, he's a little He's a little older, but I think if the Yankees use him right, there shouldn't be any problem. Which I think it's just subbing in for DD right now. Yeah, he's going to be... Um, I think they should, like, honestly, they should try to see if they could have him... I know they, I, they want LeMahieu to... Uh, to be kind of the utility infielder, yeah, where he'll be bouncing around. But Lemayu is actually a better glove than Tulo. Yeah, he's he's won I think like four Gold Gloves. I'm I'm hoping that it could kind of turn into you know in the same sense of uh, a you know a, a backup quarterback you know following under the footsteps of a veteran. Mm-hmm. Like I'm hoping that that kind of like helps out because Tulo's got so much experience mm-hmm. and even if somebody's well, who is he helping out. Well, I'm saying with uh, like Lemayu, like even though. Lemayo's been in the league. He's played with Tulo for years. Yeah, I, that, no, that's yeah. what I'm saying. I'm hoping it like, continues. I'm hoping well, that no, it continues. No, yeah. them, like, I, working. I think what Tulo is, who he should be mentoring and who he should be preparing, would, would be is Andahar, Andahar and, and and Glaber. Yeah, like those are the two guys that who need to pick up his his, his yeah. knowledge. Uh, that's uh, Lemayo doesn't really need like Tulo going like, hey man, <laughs> like listen, buddy. That, that, He's that, like, fuck that you, bro. That, 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 that's true. But I also I meant like, um, you know. Not only him, but when you X two, he was for some reason the first one that came to mind. But I meant as a infielder, right? Like, and we're you know, I think as a as a high level professional baseball player, Tulo is the best guy to have on that bench for those young yes. guys. Yes, because even when Didi comes back, I mean, even D, like Didi can learn a thing. But Didi's mm-hmm. really good. I fucking love Didi. I do too. As, as a Met fan, I love Didi Gregorius. I think he's he's <laughs> a, a he's a fantastic ball player. I think he's a great leader on that team. I love that fucking swing. Yeah. I love that swing. I know. Maybe that'll be an episode. I Swings know. I fucking love. Ken Griffey, number one. <laughs> Perfect thing for an audio <laughs> show. Talking about um, a visual. <laughs> um, yeah, with uh, with DD, you know, I obviously was like every other Yankee fan mm-hmm. when he first joined, and you know, he didn't play well for a while. No, he didn't play. And, he didn't play well for. He he was in Arizona for a couple of years and no, he, I meant when he came to the Yankees. No, I know, but like that's he, what I'm saying. Yeah. He grew into being a Yankee. Yeah, so obviously he grew into it and is now playing he, exceptionally well. He's the know. Yankees fans' favorite Yankee. I think a lot of Yankee. There's not a Yankee fan out there right now that would be like, "Yo, I hate Didi." I don't. I don't hate him, but I. I don't. He's not my favorite. He's not your favorite. No, judges. I love Didi as a person, but Judge just brings a sort of excitement. To Aaron the Judge, game. Aaron Judge brought that heat in the playoffs that he could not back up, though. That is true. He fucking blasted New York, New York, and the Red Sox smacked him up. Yeah, but the Red Sox would have done that with any like. With I don't know. You, you know had them I mean? on the ropes. You had them like demoralized. You beat them in Boston, mm. and then they and then you play New York, New York. <laughs> uh, you got to remember, Dustin Pedroia is still on that bench. He's still out there. Mm-hmm. I got you. Yeah. Um, um, what do you think of the, what do you think of the bullpen additions with Britain, Adovino, Adovino? I mean, Adovino, yeah. Yeah. Um, it, it's a, it's a, 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 a welcoming addition. You know, we, we had, you know, in the past few years, we went from Robinson, uh, you know, uh, Soriano, Raphael Soriano. Cool. Sorry. Well, you talk about closers? No, no, I'm like in, like our, our depth, like oh, okay, you know, um, oh, like last year you were Robinson, Britain, uh, was uh, fucking. And we had Andrew Miller, Andrew Miller at, at some point, yeah. uh, a couple years ago. Like and Andrew, Andrew Miller was the. That's a weird thing because the way Andrew Miller has played, you thought like, oh yeah, like that makes sense to keep Andrew Miller on the team, but the Yankees traded him so that they could rebuild. Yeah, like they made these prospect moves, and they're like, all right, well, Andrew Miller's got to go because we have this contract. But then, like, you called up, I think, Tyler Austin and Aaron Judge. And, and they're Aaron like, Judge. And they're like, oh, shit, we're still in it. Yeah. <laughs> Fucks. All right. Yeah. So then they spent, like, the next year 
fixing the the bullpen. Yeah, but I mean, now I believe we still have Chapman uh, closing. Chapman's closing, I think, for the next three for, years. For the next three years. Um, I think Dylan Patanz is going to be a free agent after this year. Yeah, but, you know, Patanz also needs this year to get, you know, paid. Like, if he wants... Oh, yeah. Like, this is his, this this is his is, year his of, walkie, like... Yeah. So, you know, with him playing, hopefully, his ass off, uh, that should be pretty well. And then you, you throw in... Um, you know the two additions that we've got. Uh, you know, I feel like we have a uh, a little bit more of. Uh, I think the, the Yankees are going to win. Stronger. The, I think the Yankees will win the division. I think the Red Sox will not be good this year. They have not made. They, it. Did, they didn't make any splash. They, and I understand that their team's good, but they could have. They could have really went. Nuts. They could have went nuts. Yeah, you know? they. Um, I think because they're hoping Pedroia comes back. Mm-hmm. They're doing. They're doing the stand pat. So they resigned uh, Nathan Avaldi and uh, Steve Pierce is kind of a. Well, they signed Nathan Valley three years, and I think they want to return. Uh, they want to make him a, a bullpen guy. Yeah, because he he throws like a hundred miles an hour. So put him in the pen, close out games, and that's why I don't think they. That's why they're not going not going crazy at the Kimbrel, mm-hmm. because they're like, well, we have Avaldi for three or four years. Like, well, why can't we just you know accelerate the process right now? Yeah. Um, and they signed Steve Pierce, who's so more of a thank you because he was clutch. Because Steve Pierce has played literally for every team in the American League East. Mm-hmm. And they just like, he's a good player, but he's not like, you know, not, you don't go like, oh, five years down the line, thank God we still have Steve Pierce on our team. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, and the Red Sox really have just made kind of minor moves. Uh, nothing really, nothing really crazy, nothing really splashy. Uh, same with the Blue Jays, I think. They didn't make too much, too much uh, effort at things. I'm trying to read the list of what they did. They got Freddie Galvis, who's. Uh, right now slated as a backup infielder. Because, I mean, I think the big thing is why Toronto didn't go uh, big and why they cut, they, they let Josh Donaldson walk, they let, two, they let Tulo go, is because they have in their, in their minors, which we'll get to, they have two top guys coming. They yeah. Have, you know, Vlad Jr., who you'll hear oh, nonstop, nonstop about. Nonstop, absolutely who's, nonstop. He will probably be drafted in a, in a lot of a lot of fantasy drafts within the first five rounds i mean a hundred like he was on like any time that he had a big play he was at the top of reddit every single time you You know know what the crazy thing is i don't think i've ever seen him field a ball i think i've only seen him hit home runs hit home runs yeah Yeah. he can't i don't think he could feel or do something great outside of it you know like something with a fan interaction of some sort um and they also have uh dante bichette jr Mm -hmm. or yeah i think that's his name no is it they have they have a bichette one of the (laughs) So yeah, I think that I think Toronto is going to be more of a wait and see team that they didn't go, and I think they know that because they mm-hmm. they need to fix their starting pitching, and this guy that they could sign that kills the Yankees every which way, uh, Dallas Keuchel still free agent. Yeah, don't know why. I that's somebody I would love for us to us An- to grab too. Another like, guy who would have like yeah, beard. absolutely like that yeah that too. But yeah. also like I think. Th- the biggest problem why we didn't do so well last year was our starting pitching, mm-hmm. and at this point, I think we need to build that up as much as possible. Yeah, like I, any of the hot pitching free agents, like I'm glad that we got who we got right now, mm-hmm. but I think we could still make a, a nice starting rotation add. For some reason, uh, every everybody who likes the Yankees keep on saying like, "Oh, you know, Madison Bumgarner, let's get Madison." I don't. Think, I don't want Bum- Bumgarner. I don't think he'll be good in New York. No, I, I also he's. To me, he's too old. He's, you know, like... 30. Yeah, but... 33? But he's been around the league long enough. He's thrown too many arms. He's too many innings. He's thrown, like, 5,000 innings each year. Yeah. He's the only good pitcher they have in San Francisco. And he was constantly doing, like, complete games. Yeah. Like, or at least going into the ninth or the eighth. Was it? I think this week, they had a quote. uh, I don't know if it's real or if it's fake. Um, It's... Because there's that that trend with... uh, I know Tampa Bay and Oakland really kind of... Uh, went with it. It was the opener where they'd mm-hmm. have a relief pitcher start a game, start a game, and then go to the starting pitcher for like four innings, mm-hmm. and then go back to the bullpen. Where he's like, if anyone is an opener for my game, I will walk right out of the stadium. <laughs> 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 so yeah, I think I, ah, I, I just think that uh, when when it comes down to him, he's he's seen too many players. Like he's, oh. Well, that's great. Mikey's 
entire system just shut the fuck down. Yeah, that sucks. Um, and that's as, why I bring an iPad. That's true. That's true. As I'm like looking up stats and stuff like that, my computer just crushed on me. Um, <laughs> you know, I I feel like he's just been around the league so long and been dominant so long that mm-hmm. I feel like he doesn't have much longer of him being a dominant pitcher because I think that people finally like going to catch on to him. Like, not that they haven't already, but you know, you think time's up, time's up, time's up. I, you know, and knowing him, he's going to do fucking great this year. Cause I said this, but <laughs> I just, I don't know. I, I don't think that he could play well in New York. I don't the think teams he, that we play. I think he, could I just think get he's like, advantage of. I think he's like the next Cliff Lee, like how Cliff Lee was like really he was really, really good in Cleveland. He had a bad year in Cleveland, then he followed up with like two really solid years, and then he was traded to the Phillies, mm-hmm. and then he went to the, the Mariners, and then back to the Phillies, and then the Rangers, where he's that kind of like, he'll just come in on a play, he'll get traded during a playoff push to a team, and then he'll be like, all right, well, I'll sign somewhere else, and then he'll keep getting traded. Yeah. I think that's like his next course of, uh, or you know what, he'll just fucking retire. Because what has Probably. he got to prove? He's got two that's World true. Series rings. <laughs> yeah. Just kind of like he's he's good. Crazy. Thinking of uh, talking about teams uh, and prospects. Uh, let's talk about a team that lost a prospect to the NFL. Oh yeah, the Oakland A's. Let's talk about the Oakland A's. <laughs> if it was any other team, I don't think it would have happened. If it was if it was the Yankees, yeah. Kyler Murray would be suited up in pinstripes. Oh, hundred percent. If it was the they Mets, they would have fucking oh, paid that. Fucked up. They would have probably paid that money. But still, how do you go from such a safe amount of money? You know. To putting essentially well, your life on the well, line. Well, you're going to get paid. You know? He'll get paid a lot more in the NFL immediately. Immediately, yes. And but also, his, his body car- will get destroyed. His, his career might be shorter. His, uh, but he'll be he'll throw he'll be thrown right in. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's a question for the Pick Life podcast to answer. Ooh. Uh, I mean, the football show. Uh, <laughs> I think with uh, <laughs> I think Kyler. Mer- I think if because it was Oakland. That's why. That's why. Yeah. That's why it's bad. I don't. I don't think if it was like, and Oakland's a contender. Oakland's like a real. They're a really good team. They they the manager won manager of the year. Uh, they have really good players, but that's the the stadium is shit. The, yeah. Like they like they like the city the, is. Yeah, the city's got its charms. Um, I think, like, if Ky- Kyler Murray would have been fine, like if he was on. Houston Astros, like anywhere else, that like they take care of their players. Oakland doesn't seem like they take care of their players, mm-hmm. and that, I think that's been and that's been like a current trend since like the seventies. Like mm-hmm. Oakland just kind of just uses them, and they're like, "Oh, you're coming up to a free agent, bye." Yeah, you know, like look at what, like Johnny Damon was out. You know, like Jason Giambi, Giambi. You know, yeah. you know all these guys who had better careers after the A's. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's just like, and also like, it's the same. It's been the same GM for twenty years. Just, I don't know. I, I don't think know. I think if you're, if you want money from a team, make sure you don't play for a team that has a movie about yeah. him being a cheap. How famously manager. cheap they are. Yeah, yeah. like, <clears throat> like you're gonna watch Moneyball and be like, that's a team I want to yeah. play for. A team that's not gonna pay for my like pay me right. no matter how good i do like you have to pay for sodas here like <laughs> yeah like uh, uh i think it may have changed like since then. josh like josh reddick right like i wanted him off the a's so long ago because he's a player that i think deserves a little bit more money than what he was getting right. and now he's in houston now he's in houston yeah i don't think he's getting paid as much i don't think because also you know a lot of a, a big problem with baseball now is that as you get older you're not getting paid as much. So if you're, you're like a lot of these guys who, like, uh, they when they, they when they debut, they get like six years automatically with the team. Mm-hmm. So if you if you come up in the major leagues when you're 22, 23, and then you're you're free agent when you're like 31, they're not gonna be like, well, I'm not gonna give a 31 year old a 10 year deal or yeah, like that's why which, the, which is why you see Harper and Machado now. It's so like they want a long term tra- contract because they know that by the time they hit 30. Nobody's gonna want to give them, oh, yeah. you know. And also, it's a, an it's amazing that these two guys are twenty six years old, and no one's like forking over the entire bank going like, "Yeah, go ahead, knock yourself out, dude." Even if I like, even if I wasn't like, even if you look at the Yankees, you know, obviously I look at the Yankees the same way. You know, I I think of the Cowboys like mm-hmm. they're the team that I follow the most. Like, so obviously that's my go to 
Like, right. my perspective is the Yankees. So, you know, you look at the Yankees, they had some depth problems, uh, depth problems, not no. depth. Well, <laughs> they had uh, depth problems uh, last year, okay. you know, when, um, when Judge got hurt, um, you know, and then that overlapped with some with some other injuries like Clint Frazier was out with yeah, concussions, cl- exactly. so he couldn't take over for Judge. So, so a lot of stuff like that. I think Aaron Hicks was hurt for a Aaron while Hicks too. Was, Aaron Hicks was hurt. Stanton had a few days on the, uh, you know, on the right. DL. Um, when it, when it comes down to it, like I would love to pick up Harper because when you have the money, like the Yankees have the money, if they want to spend it, like mm-hmm. they should be spending it, right. and. I, I know that, you know, our, our good buddy Chris, um, you know, was on the Pick Last podcast. Runs a blog, Charging the Mound. Uh, yes. See if you like to check that out. He's very against the Yankees getting uh, Harper because he thinks that we don't need him. But I'm on the boat where, like, we, we, need a, we want to win a World Series within the next year or two. Mm-hmm. We came close last year. This year, like, is the year that I think we're going to go, like, full body for it. Why wouldn't you go for the best player available at that position that you could use help? And even if you like keep him on the DH, if you don't want him, if you don't want him starting in the outfield, you know. But then move, that move Judge over that to puts Stanton in the outfield, and Stanton's a worse defensive outfield than Harper is. And but that's something that they. they I think it, I think you you sat with with Harper and Stanton, you sacrifice a lot of defense for a lot of power. But also, yeah. if you look at Harper's uh, batting average. It's a lot of strikeouts. You're adding a lot of strikeouts mm-hmm. to the team. Jo- uh, Stanton strikes out a bunch, uh, and and Harper strikes out a lot because he's got the, they got very big swings for these guys. Mm-hmm. Now you're gonna look up to see how many strikeouts he has. No, no, I'm looking. Up, I'm looking up his like his actual stats. Yeah, I mean, if you look um, at 2018, you'll see he had like two something. What did? So he batted two forty two forty nine, about two fifty, mm-hmm. um, which is down from three nineteen the year before. Yeah. Um, he had 169 strikeouts. So yeah, How many strikeouts did he have the year before? Uh, 99. Yeah, that's so, a big yeah. dip. Because um, he was trying to do too much. He also had uh, almost 200 plate appearances more in this year than last year. Okay. Um, last last year, he played 50 games less. Um so, oh, the year oh in two thousand in, tw- in, tw- uh, in twenty seventeen he played one hundred and eleven games. I think he was hurt. Uh, he was, yeah, yeah, he was. Um, that was I think that was the year when he ran into the wall for the second time. Oh no, he's right? run into a wall like every year. Oh, yeah, like they, you got to be more specific. That's true. There was one time he ran into a wall and he cut his throat, <laughs> and they're like, "Oh my god, he's gonna die." <laughs> like, he he um, he's a very like undisciplined outfielder. <laughs> very undisciplined. <laughs> he doesn't know where he doesn't his awareness isn't great. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. you know, yeah. but, you know, I don't know. I, I, I'm just, you I'm just, just you're on board, board with the idea of Harper being a Yankee. Yeah, I, I think that, you know, Harper being a Yankee could, uh, he, he'll be right up there with being the face of the franchise as well as Judge, as well as, uh, you know, DD. Eventually, DD is going to be just as big as well, Judge. Well, DD's a free agent at the next year. Uh, there's no way we're letting him go. Mark my words, there's no way. We're letting DD go. Yeah. We got very lucky that we got DD uh, in the sense of like how he's playing now. Mm. Um, I don't think that we're going to chance letting him go for another shortstop unless we get a big shortstop. Well, if they sign I mean, Machado, that's that's the only way you'd see DD be gone. Like if Machado mm. signed this year with the Yankees and they signed like a seven-year deal, DD and Andahar are probably you know marked men. Yeah, like it would depend because it depends because if uh, Machado wants to stay playing shortstop and he could do that because he's still under thirty and he's still very good defensively, you could be like, all right, well, Didi's got to go because mm-hmm. you're not gonna be like, well, Glaber Torres is gonna go and we could put D- uh, Didi at fucking second. Mm-hmm. Like, no, D- like Didi will walk away. He'll be he'll be on someone else's team. But like, I think if they did sign Harper, it, you you'd lock in Didi. But I think also. The reason why I don't think they're going nuts is because they want to stay under the luxury tax. And, yeah. Because they're always paying too much money, and, you know, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I just, I, I, I can understand both sides of the argument for the Yankees getting Harper and Machado. We had a starting pitcher last year play in the outfield. Like, we need, <laughs> we need depth, but why not there's just other, overkill? But there's not, why other not just ways overkill? to build depth. Like, there are other players out there that you can build depth around. Like, mm-hmm. 
Yeah. But but you know, this is a hundred percent Gardner's last year. Um, yeah. Uh, so we need somebody that just brings that like aggressive attitude, and a Judge can't really. I don't. I can't see Judge being as judge aggressive. Is, judge isn't a scrappy player like Gardner. It's two exactly. different. It's two different. Exactly. That's like you know why isn't this Chihuahua a guard dog? Um, Ellsbury, uh, was supposed to report to camp, uh, has that plantar fasciitis thing or whatever. Fasciitis, yeah. Fasciitis, whatever, however, however you pronounce it. So, uh, he's not making spring training again. Like, like, why is he still on the team? Who, like, he, he's they just like a fucking ton of money. I, I, dude. A ton of money. I and that's why they, uh, that, there's, and there's, there's no, people. there's, uh, there has been a trade talk brought up between the Giants and the, and the Yankees where it'd be. Bad contract for bad contract. But yeah. you take Johnny Cueto and the... I'll uh, take Johnny Cueto. I mean, yeah, except he's you know not going to pitch this year. and I'll still take him. No, yeah, and then also <laughs> Jacoby Ellsbury would be going to the Giants. Yeah. And I think... So that's like... Because they're saying like he's in... A, just grab the fucking Ritz crackers, <laughs> goddammit. Because you, like you could hear in the background. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fucking sorry. Fucking killing... Like, I'm dying over here. I haven't eaten all day. No, no. Mm. I have rules. Mm. I have no. a rule. I'm sorry, I'm getting nauseous for not eating. Oh, oh. I apologize. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. We'll, we'll, we'll end this soon. We're coming to an hour. Um, there's, uh, like, you could go to MLB.com. They, they have, a, a, like, an ever-updating article on transactions made. And the transactions that are going to be made, a lot, like, a, like I said, a lot of them are going to happen after this episode comes mm-hmm. out. Um, we just, you know, wanted to talk about the ones that really kind of caught our eye. Yeah. Oh, we still have a few more. Yeah. Um, the Pirates getting Melky Cabrera, Lonnie Ch- uh, Chisenhall, and Francisco Liriano. I think those are big gets for them. Well, they signed him to minor. Uh, uh, Melky Cabrera was a minor league deal. Yeah, I think Francisco Liriano was a minor league deal. Uh, they traded Iv- uh, Ivan Nova to the mm-hmm. White Sox this year to clear up some salary. They've made zero improvements on their infield defense. The Josh Harrison's still out there. Um, but like yeah, getting Lonnie like their outfield now is stacked. Mm-hmm. Uh, they have a lot of bodies out there. Yeah, you know you have Starling Marte, uh, who else, and those other guys that I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, like because they 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 I think the Pirates have really wanted to uh, since lose uh, since letting McCutcheon walk. They uh, you know they they wanted to kind of change their identity as a team. And I think they're doing a good job of it. Mel Cooper is a, you know, he hits. He hit, you know. Yeah. He say he's, what you will. I think he still got it. He still hits. Like he's, he's a, yeah, he's a, he's, he's an okay player. He's like he's serviceable for one year. Yeah. Like you're not gonna like, you know, regret signing Melky Cabrera. Lonnie Chisholm Hall was uh, my sleeper pickup of the year last year. How'd that work um, out for you? Very well. <laughs> yeah. Um, was it his? Because he had, is it really? What is that? The stat line from last year? <laughs> Let's see. You mean he was your sleeper pick because he had, in eighty-two games, he had one home run. No, I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. I read that wrong. Twelve home runs, 52, 53 RBIs, two eighty-eight. No, like two, that, last year was two thousand eighteen, right? Yeah. God damn it. See, this is why you don't eat before a podcast because your brain doesn't work. When you're, when you're... <laughs> okay. So I think you got it wrong because he only had one home run and nine RBIs last year, at a three twenty one batting average and twenty nine games. So he what do you have the year before that? Twelve like twelve home runs like what I was saying. Oh, okay. Yeah, when he I had, don't remember it was. Uh, you know, you know, I picked him up for he went on a tear. Uh, I don't remember if it was last year or two thousand seventeen probably. Uh, it might have been seventeen then. Yeah, because yeah. uh, he he went on a tear for like three weeks. Yeah. And I picked him up in the beginning of that tear, and then I kind of like tucked him away. Yeah. But he, yeah, he he produced for me in in like that stra- stretch of, uh, stretch of time where I had an injury on my bench or something like that. Yeah. Um, and I think Ch- Lonnie Chisnell offers the Pirates some. Uh, he could play outfield. He could play third base. He could play first base. He he, he has some different. He could wear some different gloves. Yeah. Um, Francisco Liriano once again back in the in the in the black and gold. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's still going. Yeah, he's still going. He's still doing his thing. So uh, good for him. I mean, um, anything else? Anyone else? I mean, I, I can't think of. Uh, for the Pirates, no. But yeah. uh, Cardinals picked up uh, Paul Goldschmidt Whoa. and Andrew Miller. That 
that was a crit because now they're talking about extending uh Gold, Gold, Paul Goldschmidt is going to be another big free agent. Mm-hmm. But like, because because the who they trade uh, trade him for was like nothing. Yeah. It was like two low level prospects and and Luke Weaver. Yeah. It's like you're like all, all right because you know Paul Goldschmidt's going to cost a lot of money, but they may resign him like before the year's over. Mm-hmm. So the Cardinals crafty move, very crafty yeah. move. Um, yeah, you you throw any because now you have a uh, Paul uh, De Jong, the, the shortstop. <laughs> the, the, I don't, the I don't know how to pronounce his name. De Jong, so. De Jong, yeah, he he cracks a lot of home runs. You got Matt Carvin, who's a fucking just machine. Mm-hmm. He hits, you know, he had thirty five home runs I think last year. Yep. Um, and then uh, their second baseman, I think, is still Colton Wong. I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, because I'm, I'm not looking the shit up. I'm just kind of going off. The, uh, they also have. Um, Fucking their outfield Pablo Ozuna from the Marlins. He's in left field. They don't have uh, their center field situation. I should look up who's there, who's on their team. But I'm th- pretty sure like the Cardinals like they stocked up with these two picks. Like Andrew Miller has been one of the top back of the back of the uh, bullpen guys for the last four years. Uh, actually, for a while now. He's like I like I like what the Cardinals doing. I like the Cardinals a lot. Mm-hmm. I think I'm going to go to a Cardinals game this year. Ooh. Down in St. Louis. Got Yadi Molina, who doesn't age. Uh, <laughs> Jed Jerko. Well, Jed Jerko is a third baseman. Tommy, F- no, he's gone. Matt though. Carpenter, too. How are we not talking about Matt fucking Carpenter? Cause... Like you said, he's a machine, man. He's a machine. Uh, Luke Voigt, no longer on the team. No longer on the Got team. Got picked up by the Yankees last year. Yep. That was a big get. Yeah. Yeah, he produced for us. Um... Let's hop on over to. We could talk about the Phillies real quick. Um, you know they picked up uh, Kutch. Uh, um, yeah, uh, they made a, they picked up Andrew McCutcheon. One of their first moves this year. Yep. They also picked up David Robinson. David Robinson, former Yankee. Yep. They, yep. Um, and they just made a move for JT Riamuto, who, with the, who was on the Marlins, and fucking Derek Jeter when the Mets are calling about fucking. Riamuto, they wanted <laughs> a three way trade. Three way trade with every they... every good prospect. Every like it would be like. Conforto, Syndergaard, and uh, someone else to the Yankees. <laughs> the Mets would get Real Muto, and the, the Marlins would just get like crappy prospects. Crappy prospects, yeah. <laughs> and like it doesn't make any sense. Like, but that's because Derek Jeter on, like only wants to make the Yankees a better team. <laughs> Do you think that's that's? Yeah, that's obviously like that's why he gave them like Giancarlo Stanton for Starling Castro. I mean, Stanton he... also had a fucking monster contract too. Well, yeah. You like know. obviously, like obviously, he had, a, he had a monster contract, but I mean, look what he gave the he gave because uh, I mean the Yankees wanted I think they wanted Stanton, but they should have went after Yelich. Mm-hmm. Like and, the, and the, like he's like, all right, you want this guy or you want this guy? And I think I know like the contracts were definitely in play. But the Yankees should have definitely got fucking Yelich because he was an yeah. MVP last year. Just get him out of fucking Florida. Would have been, but they traded. Nice. They traded <laughs> the MVP of the year before to the Yankees for like nothing, and they. And I think I honestly think Derek Cheater is trying to just make the Marlins like the Yankees of the South, <laughs> and he hired. He just hired Jorge Posada as a special assistant. I mean, they're friends, you know. So what? <laughs> what is Jorge, why? Why is it taken now to, for Jorge Posada to get a job inside baseball? Honestly, I don't know. I don't know. What, He's been what retired he... for almost like. Four years, right? Three, More than four, that. Four or five years? Five years, six years, maybe? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, wow. I can't believe it's been that long. Yeah. I I forgot that we had Brian McCann for, what, three years? Something like that, yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, McCann. And we, and Russell Martin. Russell Martin, yeah. Fuck. Yeah, dude. Pisada's been gone for a long time. Yeah. Probably two... He, didn't, he wasn't on the team in 2009, right? He was. Oh, he was. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because that was... Yeah, that was the year that Cheater and him. It was their last year, yeah. It was, yeah. Oh, so, wow. Almost. So not, I think wow, Francisco Cervelli years. was their backup there. Yeah, Cervelli, too. Wow. Holy yeah. shit. Dude, I don't know why, but like 2011 and like 2013 feels like it was like two years ago for me. Like, I remember 2013 more than I remember 2017, 2016. Like, I don't know why. I just. There is a huge gap of time that I'm apparently missing because I remember 2013 and 2012 and 2011 as if it like just happened. 
Honestly, it's the weirdest fucking thing in the world. Like, I can't think that 2011's been nine years. Eight years. Eight years, sorry. 2010, nine years. I, like, that, I don't know. I'm fucking shook right now. <laughs> wow. Um, wow. So, let's talk about the Mets. <laughs> I think there's a bigger <laughs> topic to talk about. But, uh, yeah, let's let's talk about, the, speaking of a team that wants to relive a time way back, uh, the Mets. They made some moves. Yeah, they did. They and got, I like a lot of... They got one of my favorites. Who? Jed Lowry. Jed Lowry, fucking... That guy... They've been trying to get him for the past, like... I feel like six years. Mm-hmm. Since he was on the Red Sox. They're like, oh, we love... They're like... They they wanted to sign up, but they didn't want to commit. It's like how they did with his, his Drupal Cabrera. It's like, oh, we want him, but well, let's wait till he's, like, yeah, mm-hmm. older. Uh, but yeah, Jed Lowry's going to play third base this year. Uh, Ed's, you know... I think they're gonna have him bat second, mate. Hopefully, I mean, yeah, he's gonna be he's gonna be a nice little add to the, this lineup. Uh, you got Robinson Cano at second base until they introduce a DH in the <laughs> National League. Uh, who else? Uh, Edwin Diaz, one of the best closers last year in baseball, comes over with the Cano. Mm-hmm. Uh, they just oh, they also signed like Rajay Davis. He's gonna compete for a job in the uh, outfield. Uh, Kean Braxton, who they got from uh, Milwaukee. For like nothing, I think, for no like no real big no real big pieces, but like Keon Braxton's interesting because he get at twenty five home runs, but also strike out two thousand times in a year. That's impressive. It was very impressive. That's very impressive. And that's why they, they they want like Jeff McNeil, who uh, came up last year to like get some outfield time mm-hmm. because they don't really know what they have yet. Uh, they also got uh, Wilson Ramos, a mm-hmm. catcher, a solid catcher, which is what we've been lacking in for for years because it was. It's funny because we made a deal a few years back, uh, R.A. Dickey to the the Blue Jays for Travis Darno, because yep. he, he was a, he was a catching prospect, big time news. He was tra- he was in the Philly system. They traded him for Cliff Lee, um, and like uh, they they so they like he was a piece of there, and then they traded him up to Toronto, and then Toronto then traded him to us for R.A. Dickey, and the throw in was Noah Syndergaard. Mm-hmm. But you would think with the way. This, the their careers have kind of turned out that Syndergaard would have been the the key piece of that. Yeah, as like what like this guy this guy who's barely on the team who's like injury prone and like oh they may just cut him mm-hmm. but like and then like Syndergaard was like oh he's gonna command a ton of money when he's a free agent like that's like I don't know I just I like the, and now that we have a catcher who could like fucking work with these guys. We were signed Devin Mezzarocco, who was a good who was a good addition. He just needed to change the scenery. He really enjoyed playing in New York. He, you know, he, he uh, he's a guy who get he always got hurt in Cincinnati. Yep. Comes to the Mets, plays most of the season. You know, hits a bunch of he hit, hits a few home runs. But you know, he was he's he was there to fill in for uh, Darno, who got hurt earlier in the year. And it's between him and Kevin Pawecki because they had a, a catching tandem. But yeah, I think with the Mets moves. But the problem is they're in such a deep division with the the NL. The NL. Uh, the NL East being like, you know, uh, the Washington Nationals. Yeah, they might lose Bryce Harper, but they have like Juan Soto. and They, they have, picked up, they, they also made a big splash too. They picked up Patrick Corbin. Yeah. Uh, they picked up, and I think they got someone else. Brian Dozier, Brian, Chris Suzuki, yep. uh, uh, Jeremy Hellickson, Matt Adams. Yeah, they have a lot of Trevor guys that Rosenthal. like, they could make a very good a very good run for it especially you got Corbin Scherzer uh Strasburg that's a big that's a, those are big rotation guys does that suck they make a big run for it and they do well I would, after fucking Harper I would like, love to see fucking Harper sign with some team right now and then the Nationals win the World Series the next two years I I would t- like as a Met <laughs> fan it would hurt me to see it but I would love it if the Nationals won a, like actually if the Nationals won a playoff game Oh, <laughs> if they won like the the NLDS, yeah. I would love it because Bryce Harper has never made it. Anywhere, there's but... there's not much I like more than spiteful pettiness. I love it, and especially and, in baseball. Yeah, because so, it's such like a long season. I'm right there with you, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I I was always a fan of Harper. You know, yeah, you are, you obviously are. Um, we, we've heard you. Yeah, yeah. I I mean I don't know if it's like on record and stuff like that, but like yeah, we said remember... it on this this episode alone. No, I meant like. You know why I'm a fan of him? Like, you like his hair? No, he actually copied hair, his hair with me. You're the same age. That dude. That's what I'm saying. Like, I remember being in high school, hearing about this kid hitting the fucking back of the Toronto Dome, Tampa Bay, Tampa Bay Dome. Sorry, yeah. um, 
or Tenth of Bay Dome. Yeah. And I'm like, who the fuck is this kid? And then you know, yeah. after I you, graduate, the he's best fucking... part is the best part <laughs> is you are now at that stage in life that I've been at for a while, where people are now younger than you playing in Major League Baseball, and now there's someone your yeah. age. Who's about to sign like a three hundred million dollar deal? And I'm sitting here, and you're, and you're like, "Well, I have three computers. What does he have?" <laughs> <laughs> well, Brian, I just got a promotion, so you know. Yeah, we all did. Yeah, I'm very <laughs> close to you know. Yeah. All right. I'm sorry. Going to be the starting outfielder for a major league baseball team, or um, let me read your business card again. <laughs> um, <laughs> partnership manager with G Fuel. I mean, both prestigious, prestigious, Thank you know, you. job Thank titles. You very much. Thank I, you, you know. You know, but when your contract's up, are you going to sign with Red Bull for $300 million? First of all, no. I don't... Monster no. Energy? No. I'm getting out of Rock the Rockstar? Ener- getting, getting out of the, out energy. Of the energy game. <laughs> by the time I'm... retire. <laughs> by the time I'm Bryce Harper's age, I'm going to get out of the... I'm en- going to get right into coffee. Ooh, coffee. Yeah, going to work for... Still don't like coffee, so. Yeah, still don't, yeah. As we um, end the show, what's your thoughts on coffee? Coffee, energy drink? Coffee trash. The original energy drink? Besides cocaine, mm. uh, <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> oh man! Forty-two days until opening day, Brian. Good God! Forty-two that's, days. That's at least ten episodes. Mm. No, it's not. Mm. Forty-two. Maybe five. You think so? Five? Well, we do it every two weeks. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So next week, I think our next week we're going to talk about prospects. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll cover. Yeah, because uh, that's pretty much it. For uh, we're gonna push this boat as far as we can to, to the lake before we drown. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, next week we'll talk about prospects. We're gonna go off the. We'll probably take the top five or ten from MLB.com and then go over what they're gonna do because it's most people know. Um, yeah. So that will, that will probably be it for next week. This week yep. we we covered some transactions and like we said, transactions are constantly moving. After this episode, it's like this is the. Easily, easily dated episode. Yeah, because it would be like immediately 100%. after this, something will change. Something's gonna, somebody's gonna sign. Yeah, you know, Harper's gonna sign with somebody, and we're just gonna be like, oh, yeah, like, I, like what? yeah, it's just gonna, it's gonna get like after you listen to it, it's just gonna get really bad from there on out, <laughs> which is a perfect way to sell your show. Exactly. Uh, outdated. Outdated <laughs> as all hell. So yeah, so that would be that. Mm-hmm. Let's uh, let's. Say goodbyes. All right. Well, uh, you can find me uh, on Twitter at dquat, on Instagram at mdquat, and that's pretty much it on for streams. Right now. Stre- uh, Twitch.tv slash dquat. Also on any other streams you do? Uh, I, I stream with the G Fuel Energy Channel on Twitch on Fridays and Sundays. He shakes it up with the G Fuel guys. I shake it up with the G Fuel guys. We play some Fortnite. So. Uh, very big changes coming to that channel. Oh. Uh, some a little something something coming up. So are you gonna stir it up? Is that, I'll instead I'll of shake it up, you're gonna stir it up. We're shake it up. We're shaking it up. So be on the lookout. Lord. Be on the lookout. <laughs> what? I, I don't know. Oh, <laughs> I don't. I'm like trying to think. Like I don't play any video games. So. No. Uh, always you, you can do watch movies. Though, I do right? watch movies, but you can find Andrew, who's not with us, at uh, at Parks X Core. Uh, mm-hmm. At Bullduck Gaming, Bullduck uh, Gaming, they do Bullduck Gaming uh, weekly video game podcast. So you can check that out. They're on YouTube as well. Bullduck Gaming, uh, they they Twitch. I think it's Bullduck Game. Bullduck Games, yeah. Bullduck Bull, Gaming. Bullduck Gaming. Uh, Twitch yeah. TV. Bullduck Game. Yeah, let's let's get a let's get a fact check here. Yeah, I don't we remember. should know this. <laughs> uh, it is for some reason. Anytime I try to type in. Right there, it like doesn't come up right away. Oh. So they're on Twitter at Bullduck Gaming. Bulldog just Gaming. Up. So yeah, everything Bullduck Gaming. Uh, uh, Bullduck you... Gaming on Twitter as well. Yes, uh, you can also find me uh, at Movie Man Pod on Twitter at Movie Man Podcast on Instagram. Also, if you're in the market for some shirts that are, can be made, you could oh. you could find me at T Public on T Public. Uh, just type in Movie Mayhem, and we have a couple of shirts. We've got. A, a shirt if you're a New York fan of mm. many different boroughs. I am. Uh, yeah, so we have one that's uh, kind of Queens inspired. We have one that's kind of uh, LeBronx inspired. Throw up the X. Throw up the X. Also, Jesus Romero comes back, I think, next Dude, week. Dude, next week. Can't wait. Yeah, it's going to be good. Uh, we're going to try getting them on the show. Uh, yes, can't wait. So, yeah, next They're big Yankee fans. Big Yankee, big Yankee Bronx fans. fans. Uh, yeah, so. 
that's it. We'll we'll be back next week, uh, talking a little bit of prospects, and then uh, so the the way it's going to go, hopefully, I I kind of planned it out. It's so yeah, transactions the first week, mm-hmm. obviously we did it. Next week, prospects. Week after that, fantasy baseball. Yeah, and then the week before the season starts, predictions. Predictions. I like that. Yeah, I like that. I'm Thank excited. You know yep. So that will do it for us. Alrighty, guys. Later. Enjoy.